We just got back from the farmer's market and noticed that we now have our label on our minivan so we can be identified. There's also labels on the front of the rigs too. Ours is actually covered up by the um, Magna shade right now, but let's go take a look at Pat and Paul's. You can see they've got theirs there. They're number four. They also put numbers on the back so that we can all be identified. And uh, I would think the back ones are probably the most important for the um, guy that's coming through the back. What do they call it? The tail gunner. And there's ours up there. We're number five. So that's nice to be able to be um, identified in case you have a problem and you're on the side of the road and they can say, oh boy, there's one of our people, number five. They can look up our names and also <clears throat> be able to uh, look up our phone numbers. All right, I can see there's a number of people starting to actually come in. So uh, we're getting there. It's getting exciting. Caravan adventure. So this person gets a special sticker because this is actually their 33rd adventure with Adventure Caravans. Wow. Well, that says a lot about their experience and how much they enjoyed it. Today is the first day of our caravan. We are in St. George, Utah, and we're actually taking a 31-day caravan with Adventure Caravan. So today is the beginning. We are uh, going to our orientation right now. And at some point today, we're gonna get our RV washed, get Miles washed. You can see uh, Paul and Pat are getting it done. And we'll be next. Let's go. Right. Orientation time, we're excited. There are, I think, about 20 RVs that are gonna be part of this caravan and we're doing the western circle which is a lot of the um, national parks that are in the area so we're excited Think about that when i was in there guys are overachievers nobody's yeah. here yet. yeah yeah we're, we're overachievers yeah. <laughs> so here we go here's the beginning of our adventure caravans 31 day grand circle tour and this is actually the first uh, formal and probably the largest meeting we had where we discussed how the trip log works, how the radios work, and the things that will help us all uh, work together as a team to have a successful caravan. And after this meeting, we had a little informal get together, but then later in the evening, we had kind of a welcome dinner which really solidified and started a lot of great friendships. Sue and I are gonna try to work together to put together a series of videos here that will not only take you along on all the different sites and national parks that we went to, but we're gonna try to dive a little deeper to show you what it's like to go on a caravan like this that has so many activities planned for you. We'll show you places we always wanted to go, parking spots that we never would have parked in before. We'll show you sites like this on the north rim of the Grand Canyon that just took our breath away some of the many reoccurring get-togethers that we had that allowed us to get to know our travel partners more and more each day. There were the optional trips like this horseback riding one that Sue went on. And then on some of the free days, we cooked up our own things to do, which of course usually means break out the e-bikes. We went to so many national parks that were back to back that we were literally able to discuss them in detail on how they differed. But the real corker for us was how we were taken way out of our comfort zone, driving on roads that we would never have anticipated driving on just as soon as three weeks ago. And because of the comfort level of talking about them in the trip meetings, and the knowing that we had other people on the roadway that were ahead of us 
and sweeping up the back, we were comfortable doing it. Just imagine Sue and the Chan Man driving on a road like this as little as three weeks ago. And here we are because of the confidence that the caravan log and our meetings and the other drivers talking about what's going to happen on our next relocation. It's easy as pie for us. Why don't you come along on this series where we explain a little bit about the caravan and how it works and how and why we selected it. And in the coming weeks, we're going to have many episodes that will follow up on all the wonderful places we visited and how things have worked out on the caravan as it progresses. All right, it came out. Um, our big thing is, I should have videotaped uh, or recorded this before. The back end is not closing as tight as it should be. This is camping. Mark and I are experiencing things out of our comfort zone and getting here was one of them. This is awesome. One of the things we're happy about um, doing this caravan is getting out of our comfort zone, getting off the interstate, exploring different areas like this, and knowing we're not alone in case something happens, a breakdown or whatever. Okay. All right, we're gonna give you a little lowdown on what we're doing. I know you see Mark is not here, but check it out. So you're probably wondering when you're theoretically seasoned travelers like Sue and I are because we have been traveling for five years and although we're not experts on anything, no. trust me, we're way better than we were when we first five started. Five years ago, for sure. And we've talked about on the channel many times how we use RV Trip Wizard and we quite honestly can't uh, fathom traveling without something like that because it's it's a very organized list based Excel spreadsheet type of a way to do planning and if we were trying to do something like our 31 day caravan tour that we actually booked here that would have been the first tool we would have uh, grabbed. That's a big help yes. Now uh, what got us to this situation was last winter when we were in Florida with our good friends Pat and Paul, we were talking about different trips that we had all went on in uh, the past. And it turns out that Pat and Paul, although they visited a lot of these parks on their motorcycles, they did not do it uh, on their RV. It's so complicated to line a trip like this up for many reasons. So uh, in our discussions, we all of a sudden one day said, hey, let's, uh, let's check to see if uh, any of these uh, uh, adventure caravans are available for us to go to uh, and just sign up and get all this rigmarole done once and for all. So we called up and guess what? Just like the last three times we called, everything was booked. Well, and, and the trip he's talking about is the Grand Circle with all the national parks in Utah, Colorado. That was on my bucket list. Right. I wanted to do it. But we could see there's a short window for us to actually travel in this area because of the um, winters. And it would have to be somewhat in the summer or early fall because of the weather and you know in the summer times this area books up a lot mm -hmm. really fast because kids are off school families are, are traveling and because we're in a big rig we thought this is going to be really hard for us to book where we want to be with our big rig we don't get into national parks or state parks for camping we're just too big so we thought, well, this is our chance to try out a caravan because they book way ahead, a year or more out, booking all the sites. Right. So when we called, it's always the same. 
we're always kind of in the same uh, time of our travel season. Hey, let's let's go on on this type of a vacation. Yeah. And when we call, they're always full. Well, this time what we did was we took up Adventure Caravan's advice and we went on a waiting list. Mm -hmm. And I warned them. I said, hey, I don't have any expectations that we're going to get on this thing because we need two slots. We want to travel with our friends. Mm -hmm. So I said, put us both on the list. And if a miracle happens, we'll jump on it. Lo and behold, uh, uh, about two months go by, and we get a call from Adventure Caravans. And they say, hey, good news. Uh, we have uh, an opening for you guys. And I said, no, it's not good news. I need two openings. And they said, no, no, we have two openings. Yeah. So it didn't take long, and we could see that this was our one opportunity to jump on it, and that's what we did. Now, Sue did not read the syllabus that I had put together. <laughs> She's got things out of order, so I apologize to you guys. It's her no, fault. No, I'm, I'm rolling with it. Come on. <laughs> I felt it. It's in so, my head. I'm yeah. going to say it. So she started talking about the difficulty in planning this uh, yourself. And when she talked about the small window of opportunity to book this, that's because our small window of opportunity during good weather is impacted a lot by the fact that wherever we are in the country, we always have to return back to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to see her lovely daughter, family. her mother, and I want to see my kids, and all that kind of stuff. And before you know it, literally from May till September, is just blown out of the water and we can't be where we need to be. Right. Or we're so busy we don't have time to plan this one year saga uh, out. So when you're trying to book in this area in the beauty of being able to uh, get on a tour like this and have everything done for you lickety split That's is nice. that uh, to a certain extent Trips like this that are this long, the 31 day, 31 days. where we literally go uh, to 10 different campgrounds, we move 10 times during the 31 days, y you have to have consecutive full hookup campground reservations. Uh, in this 31 day period, which is the sweet spot of travel, which is defined as the kids just went back to school or they're at home preparing go back to school, that opens up opportunities for us to be able to be in these campgrounds. Right. Um, you don't want to travel too late in the season. We did a video about two or three years ago where we were in the Grand Canyon, and I'm telling you, it was cold. Oh, the Southern Rim, yeah, it was pretty cold. And and it was a very enjoyable trip, and we got to see a lot, but it was way, way too cold to be there, and uh, we had to get in and out of there quick so that we weren't impacted by any snow. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if you start, if, if you take that trip uh, at the wrong time, it can be way too hot. Yeah. Now, we're, that weather. we're actually, I think, about day 19 or something in our mm -hmm. trip right now. <clears throat> so we're more than halfway through right now. Mm -hmm. And we've experienced a probably a week's worth of over 100 degree temperatures. Mm -hmm. But right now, today, as we record this, and I don't even know what the date is, it's September 8th we're recording this. It's a beautiful day. Oh my God, it's perfect. Where are we? Man, we're in Mancos, Colorado, and it's got to be like low 80s right now. It's beautiful. The other thing about planning this trip, is for people like us, we, we like to alternate between Florida and the Pacific uh, Southwest for winter. Mm -hmm. And then just about the time we decide it's too windy and maybe a little cool, and we fantasize about being in Florida, we're in Florida for one season, and then we start fantasizing about it <laughs> They're being cooler. They're both great. So they're both great. They're both we alternate great. back and forth. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, if you're gonna come this far out west to go on this extensive of a trip, mm -hmm last minute you don't necessarily want to go to the other side of the country right. so we also uh, waited until uh, the right evolution of our traveling uh, was happening um, not the least of which it brings up another subjects and that's about health and I'm talking about the health of your family the health 
of you and your travel partner and the health of your RV. If you have to plan a trip like this yourself through RV Trip Wizard and you have to book a year in advance, which is kind of comical because people always talk about that, but I'm here to tell you that if you call a lot of the RV parks that we've stayed at here and you call them a year in advance, there's going to be the old proverbial, oh, well, uh, you're going to get a recording. Uh, we're closed for the next three months and uh, leave a message and we'll get back to you and you will not have a complete reservation route and your trip planning is going to look like Swiss cheese and you're going to have a freaking nervous breakdown thinking that you're not going to have contiguous travel and there there's plenty of places to stay at mm -hmm. but not plenty of places for full hookups and uh, big rigs and full hookup 50 amp right and I, let's talk about the RV health um, we all know that getting your RV fixed is getting more and more difficult so it's almost as if you can look in the future enough to see what needs to be done on your rig make an appointment get it done and then you need to make your plans on some of these things that have uh, a, an issue where you have to be there at a certain time and you've got a certain amount of money invested before too much time passes and your RV falls apart again because mm. that's what they do sad to say. They, they fall apart. <laughs> um, the other thing is you, you have to be honest with yourself um, and ask your wife, honey, um, are your kids having any uh, grandchildren soon yeah. that are going to impact our travel schedule so you you kind of have to work around that uh, births and different uh, important things that will make you uh, travel back so when you're doing all of this planning to try to work around all of these events these life's events that are happening the fact that your clock is ticking I'm 70 years old my clock is ticking way faster than Sue's she's 65 she's a lot better she has salary juice in the morning you know <laughs> oh my I have gosh. hash browns okay so there's a difference there the reason I'm bringing this up is the going on the caravan allows you to wait till the last minute call them up if you can't get in you can get on a waiting list and you might be as lucky as we were where all of a sudden you can go in a much more reduced time period so you don't have to have all this forward planning and crystal ball involved in right. what you're doing so um, when when you go to these national parks and you're thinking that you're going to do all this planning yourself and don't get me wrong it, yeah, a lot it, it of people do done. do a lot it of actually do i was it. talking to our tail gunner and he was saying somebody on the one of the rvs mm -hmm. um trips he took they noticed there was another rv following them it was uh on their Alaska trip uh -huh. and at one point where they stopped the guy he was talking to the guy and he said so I noticed you're kind of following us he says that yeah I planned this like about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and it took me forever to get this uh, laid out and planned yeah. and how hard it was and it just so happened he was following the same route so when our tail gunner said, you know, you could have just booked this and we do everything for you. He actually told them, I won't do this again. I'll get on a caravan yeah. because everything's laid out for you so much easier. Probably going to go off your script, but I want to talk about um, why we chose to take the caravan for this particular trip. Because we've looked at it and many, many roads to get into these national parks are highways two-way highways and we tend to stick to the interstate because we are so big and then we'll park somewhat off the interstate and yeah. then use our minivan to travel yeah. all over the place and and explore the area mm -hmm. but because we had to get off the interstate and follow the different highways um, for me anyways the comfort was knowing that we're on highways that these caravans have been on before with big rigs um, they're safe there are a couple for me were very scary just because of the um, the altitude and right. looking over the cliff in my seat and stuff like that. It was a little freaky. But the beauty also is that we got to go in this unknown area for us on two-way highways where they um, we had the comfort knowing we're not alone. If anything happened, we had the caravan, we had the... Um, tail gunner and yep. the what is it the well the the wagon, trail, 
the wagon master. And the, the wagon master is the person that leaves about an hour ahead. Mm -hmm. When you go from campsite to campsite, they leave about an hour ahead so that they can discover things that aren't in the trip plan. That might be something as simple as a building burned down and all of a sudden there's a detour because there's construction equipment or a fire, it could be an accident. So they kind of sweep that route ahead they, of time. Yeah, so and our, our uh, wagon master did notify us a couple times, not of a fire or anything, but because there were detours, one mm -hmm. lane down. And even one area, it's like there, it's free range, watch out for the cows, some of them are crossing. Right. So it could be as simple as that. And, and let's let's talk about the uh, the tail gunner. The tail gunner is the last person to leave the campground to make sure that if anybody had any issues, you know, you press the proverbial button to close your slide, mm -hmm. and it doesn't it doesn't close. The you know the typical wagon master. This isn't his or her first rodeo. They know that things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Myron, our uh, tail gunner, is is a very uh, capable guy uh, mechanically and physically, and he's climbing under rigs and pounding on tires and helping people yeah. a lot. Um, which brings me to a point: a lot of people on this caravan are traveling with pets, and they uh, do. When we go to the different RV parks, there are arrangements that they have made so they have people who can walk their dogs when we're doing a really long, like motor coach tour yeah. and stuff. Right. I wanted to touch on one other thing: these caravans do for you. Anybody that's visited some of the national parks now knows this, but other folks that maybe haven't, they might be surprised to know that. You could get the campground right next door to the place. You could uh, travel all the way out there. You could have everything all laid out. But if something as simple as getting a two dollar entry, entry pass yeah. to be able to get into the national park on the day or days that you're going to be there, you will be out of luck. Yeah. And these passes are. Um, uh, unlimited supply, first come, first serve basis. They're typically available only on a website, a government website. So every morning you get on there and you're like a little squirrel pounding away, you know, hitting enter, trying to get permission to come in, and all 350 passes on that day are gone in four minutes. The next day you'll try it again. Well, you've got 60 chances at this because 59 chances because the very next day you're going to start traveling to the park yeah. and if you don't have an entry pass you're not going to be able to get in during the normal business hours sue went on a rafting uh trip so let, let let's just talk about let me finish okay honey. go ahead the excursions such as horseback riding these are all optional. rafting yeah train rides side trips dinner shows, tram okay, let, lifts, let's, let's divvy them all up. of these things typically can be full, especially during the morning hours when you want to go. Remember, we might have an excursion that's paid for by the um, uh, caravan company in the afternoon, so you can't count on going in the afternoon if you already got something to do in the afternoon. So a lot of this, if it needs to be booked in advance, they know that and they, they tell you this when you get your paperwork for them and you sign up for all these different right. things. Right. Well, some of these they actually do plan ahead for you. Some of the excursion, the motor coach tours into some of the national parks. Um, we did do a cowboy dinner show. They arranged that. <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> They had um, a nighttime cruise in the canyon lands. These, they had a lot of things that the, the uh, caravan actually organized already, yeah. but we have free days. And then on some of these free days is when they give you options. Like I did go rafting uh -huh. and I did go horseback riding down to the, um, to the bottom of Bryce Canyon, fantastic. It was really mule riding, I should say. So they give you options too. Which is nice because we have such a diverse group here, which is really fantastic. Hmm. Some people love to go hiking. Some people are going off-road jeeping. Yeah. You know, I did the, the mule ride. A bunch of us did the rafting. Hmm. There are a lot of other things to do. Not everybody's going to go off-road jeeping right on cliffs. That would be me. I would not right. do that. But some people loved it. Well, and the beauty of this is... So you is, have those options on the free days. So we've got 19 other couples here. 
we make 20. Yeah, 20. When couples. when they're done doing this, we all vote on what we really liked. Mm -hmm. And if a lot of people say, hey, you know, this wasn't really that good, the next year, it's gone. They adjust, So yeah. you get to the point where they're like boiling down every year the best and the baddest things to do yeah. so that you get the best uh, value uh, for your trip dollars. Right, from their experience, yeah. So the beauty of when we booked this, uh, after having some conversations with Pat and Paul, and we booked together, we're able to do a lot of things together. So when we have excursions where we might have to drive, let's say 20 miles, we carpool in groups of maybe six or eight cars so that we have the minimum amount of cars mm -hmm. for our 20 rigs, we actually get to drive with our friends so that when we're done with whatever that excursion was, we might want to continue on, go shopping, go into town, putz have around, lunch. go drive yeah. around. Um, right now, if you look way in the back, and I don't know if I could put an error on screen, we're parked next to Pat and Paul, just like we've been on all of the different spots. Right. One time we actually had buddy spots where we're parked in two different directions, so our doors open yeah. out to each other. That's real handy, so especially it, if, if you're barbecue type people. Yeah. You know? If you let them know you are traveling with somebody and there's some other couples traveling together, they, they pretty much always put you side by side. That That's a nice thing too. Um, tomorrow, just to show you how varied it is today, we literally are washing our bedding right now as we're doing this. <laughs> it's laundry day. So it's like an exciting day. But tomorrow is actually going to beat that because we're going on the Durango and Silverton uh, railroad excursion trip uh, with the tour group. And I believe the way this one is, is we're going to get on a motor coach and we're going to motor coach through the back roads to mm -hmm. get up right. to the train. Then we're going to have, I thought they said, three hours in town something I don't like remember. that we'll have some time yeah and then we're gonna take the train back so we're really gonna get to see the area to town we're gonna get to see town and we'll experience have it coming fun. back yeah. um, the next day not tomorrow then the next day we have another free day mm -hmm. and we're choosing to do that with Pat and Paul driving all the way over to Telluride, Telluride yeah. and hopefully the weather's going to cooperate. We're going to take the tram all the way to the top and experience what the uh, younger jet setting crowd does when they go uh, In the skiing winter. there. Yeah. We're sure that the next two weeks are going to fly by before uh, our tour ends only because the first two weeks have just oh flown God. by. They've gone by fast. Um, so we invite you to stay tuned for the next multiple episodes mm -hmm. where we're going to always try to show you what it's like to be on this tour. Mm -hmm. Many YouTube channels have told you what it's like to go to Bryce Canyon or to the, the North Rim, which by the way was awesome. North, North we love the North great. Rim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll show you that, but we're going to always try to include so that you know uh, how comfortable and fun it was to go on this with this group of people that mm -hmm. every single time we have a get together you get to know them better yeah. and better. So that there are a lot of social gatherings with our groups at the end of the day just to catch up and also to learn about our next destination and if there's anything we need to know about it. So it really has been a great way to expand, I'm gonna say expand, our village of our viewers out there. I think that's it, honey. Yeah. Is so, this a wrap? So, well, we're going to put this video out, but are we going to still put a couple videos of places we stopped before we started? We don't know. The videos might... Uh, they might be a little they out might of be a little out of sync. order. We've got some things we're working on in the background yeah, that like necessitate Glen, that. Yeah, like Glenwood Springs we were at yeah. and the things we did in St. George. Some really cool things, but we might, yeah. after this, just jump into our, yeah. our caravan. We'll have to see. I'm in charge of the order. If they're not in order... <laughs> I've got reasons, but I'm keeping them to myself. There you go. All right. All right. See you, honey. Continue on, babe. See you, honey. All right. <laughs> Another wrap, baby. All right. Let's see if the microphone's on. <laughs> oh, God. Don't even say that. Oh, my God. We forgot to, s to press the record button. You're oh. full of baloney. Oh. See ya. Hey, Sue. 
You want to earn 10 bucks real quick? <laughs> Not here, I don't. Go out on that outcropping? No. All right. Not even a hundred. Not even a thousand. All right.